Hello, my crafty friends. We're going to talk about staple length and drafting when you're spinning. It's one of the first things that you need to learn, and it's very important because it has a lot to do with how to draft, depending on the staple length. If you will look at these here, you can see we've got a staple length of this one. This is the alpaca. It's this. And we've got a staple length that's pretty long. It's, you know, the length of my hand. And then this yellow wool is, um, you know, about an inch shorter. And this white wool is about an inch shorter than that. And the brown is a little bit shorter than the white, but not a lot. But when you draft, you can only draft half of your staple length. If you draft more, you'll end up pulling it apart. Um, and that's real important because drafting, if you can't draft um, until, let me just put it this way, until you learn to draft, spinning is very difficult. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Now, the way that you choose your, I mean, the way you find out your staple length, let's go ahead and get, um, get rid of those for right now is you take, um, you just take your wool, let's pull that off, because that's, it's dry, it's sticking to me, okay, you just take it at the very end, and just pull, and then you hold it there, and pull, and see what comes out, Okay, so this is your staple length because that's what stayed together. So that's about how long this wool is. So when we draft, we're going to draft this much at a time. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that easier. When we draft, we'll only draft about this much at a time. If you start drafting away this far, you'll end up um, pulling it apart. Now, this is a wool um, wool top. This is actually sewn as yarn that you use to finger knit or finger crochet, but really it's just a small uh, wool top. This is the way wool top is um, sold. Usually it's a pretty big bunch, only it's really, really long. Okay, I just took a little bit of it out. This is um, what I call pencil roving. This one is really, it's really more of a top type, um, can't think of the word, preparation, because everything's lined up straight. Roving is more like this, where it's it's not as straight. This is pretty, this is, um, this is, this is actually, um, this is closer to top too, because it's lined up in a straight line, but, um, Robing is really jumbled up. It looks it looks different. Um, I don't have a I don't have some robing here. Um, but but when people sell wool, they call it sometimes they call it robing when it's not. Sometimes they call it top when it's not because the person who's selling it doesn't really know much about it. So just remember that when it's if it's top, everything's lined up. All the fibers are lined up going this direction. When it's robing, they're jumbled up. And the point of them being jumbled up is to for woolen spinning, which keeps a lot of air in there and makes your uh, spinning really uh, soft and squishy. But you can um, you can spin any of it, so it doesn't have you know the preparation doesn't you don't have to have a certain preparation to spin it, and you don't have to have a certain preparation to draft it. This one out of the things in the kit will probably be the easiest to draft because I've already taken it down from something that was about twice this big to these little bitty pieces. And what you do is you just take and you just pull some out and then you move your hand up and pull some out and move your hand and pull some out. And you want to hold this side with a very light touch um, because if you hold it too tight, you'll end up yanking it apart trying to get it to come out. So you hold it lightly and pull, and hold it gently and pull. And holding it gently is probably the hardest part of all of this because your instinct is to hold on tight so it doesn't come apart. 
but you're just pulling a little bit and then move your hands and pull a little bit more and move your hands and pull a little bit more and you want to do that um, the whole length of whatever piece I'm just going to do it this much but the whole length of however much you're going to do and this is the way you do in the beginning as you learn to spin more you can draft as you spin but right now you're wanting to draft um, at the beginning and it's partly for practice and partly because it's hard to learn to draft and learn to spin at the same time those are two different muscle movements and they have to be working in sync in order for this to be easy so you do, that's why you practice drafting before you ever spin anything okay now then I've got something that's about twice as long as what I had you know the piece I started out with and you can see that it looks um it looks lighter and airier because it's only about half as dense um, now if we put this on here if, if you've got your leader on I showed you how to put your leader on in the last um, the last video so if you skip that video go back and watch it <laughs> getting your spindle ready is the name of that video um, you put your leader in here under your in the through the little groove up into the hook and then you want to keep some fingers in here so you have some space to put your wool in but then you want to spin it and you just twist it to spin it oh look at that see you don't want that to happen um, that's why you keep stuff away <laughs> okay you just spin it and then you're going to put your wool in here and you're going to spin one thing that's very important is that you spin a consistent direction some people will tell you that you should always spin clockwise and ply counterclockwise and um, and it, it's not really important that you do it one direction or the other what's important is consistency if you always spin clockwise and ply counterclockwise then you will know what you were doing when you picked up when you pick up your spindle next time to go if you've spun a little bit and you put it down and you sometimes spin clockwise and sometimes you spin counterclockwise and you don't remember what you were doing on this particular spindle then you're gonna un, you might unspin your work um, so keep that in mind you need to be consistent I spin clockwise and ply counterclockwise there is um, I have heard somebody say that uh, the only thing that matters and I, I'll have to look it up and I can't remember if it's knitting or crocheting but one of those works better if you spin counterclockwise and ply clockwise but almost all preparations that you buy bought you know the um, yarn you buy has been spun clockwise and plied counterclockwise so if you're used to using um, you know production stuff from the you know from the store then you want to go ahead because you will it'll mess up your needle work if, if it's done the opposite way so um, so if you're used to using commercial yarns go ahead and spin clockwise that means that when you turn this you turn it the way a clock goes and you want to build up some twist in this leader yarn because that's that's the, the energy you're going to use to ply now that I'm going to put this through I'm going to hold it open here and put this through like that and then I'm going to let it go and it, and that spin see how it just worked its way right up there and then I'm going to spin it again and then I'm going to move my hand and then I'm going to spin it again and then I'm going to move my hand Now, if you've plied it, I mean, if you drafted it down, you know, pretty small, that's all you have to do to begin with. Now, once you've got this yarn, what do you do? <laughs> um, then you take it off and you, um, you wind it on. And I go ahead and wind clockwise because that's the way I spin. Makes it easy to remember. And then you put it back up here and you spin it. 
and you move your hand and you spin it and you move your hand and you're making yarn. Now, it's not that easy if you're trying to draft it at the same time, but because we drafted, um, pre-drafting is what that's called. Because we pre-drafted, we can do that. You spin it, and you can just let it rest in your hand while you're trying to learn this a little bit. And you hold this, you stop it. Don't let it, just let go of it, because if you do, it'll unspin. You have to park it, okay? And then you draft. So you spin, and you park, and then you draft. And then you spin, and you park it, and you draft. And then you spin. And sometimes when you get this long, you do it like that if you're sitting down, okay? Then I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on here and there are lots of ways you can wind a beautiful cop and I'm I don't worry too much about that I just wind it up as I go okay now I'm going to do a little bit more and then I'm going to show you what it would look like plied at this size okay because that's something you need to know if you're going to um to know how what size yarn you're going to end up with now, this is assuming, of course, that you're doing a two-ply. Okay, so I've got this. Now that I'm going to park that, and I'm going to bring this back, and I'm going to let it just fold back on itself. Okay, this, whoops. Let's wind it around a few times to keep it safe. Okay. Okay. This is the yarn that you would get spinning it that thin, okay? So it's a it's a it's not a it's not a real fine yarn. It's not a bulky yarn. It's just a a nice, it's a pretty nice two ply. Now, when you've done that, you want to um undo it <laughs> and spin it a little bit more because you've kind of taken some of the twist out when you did that. Okay, come on. Okay, and now then we want to wind it on. And you don't want to go more than, um, more than two thirds down your spindle. I usually go about halfway down. And then you put it right here and you just wind it around. And then you can leave it. Okay, and that'll hold your twist in the in this yarn here. Now then, if you want to draft this piece, you're going to do it basically like we did this one. You just, but this has been twisted some. They did that so they could use, use it as yarn. So you'll want to kind of untwist it. And that'll um, make it easier to draft. And then you just, do exactly the same thing we did with the alpaca. You just pull and move and pull and move and pull and move. And there we're getting it thinner and thinner. All right, be back in one minute. Okay, now we're getting it thin and that's good, but it's really important to do it evenly. And that's why you um, try to another reason to only do half the staple length because if you start doing this and you pull too much then you get a thin spot and um, and then you're like well that one's too thick and then you go back and you have to adjust that one and so um, so just be patient and only um, only draft about an inch and a half two inches at the most Till you can, till you got this down. Now, if you have a shorter staple length, then you want to go even a little bit shorter. Now, see, we've got um, we've got this long piece already, and we've still got all of this. And I just pulled off about, I guess it was, I don't know, I just pulled off some. One thing that's um, really important to learn is how to um, how to connect new fiber onto old fiber. And so if you start out working with pieces that are not really that big, 
then you have lots of uh, chances to learn how to add it in. And um, you get to the, at first, your add-ins will probably be kind of noticeable, but you'll get to the point where you can switch um, from one to the other and add in new fibers and it'll look pretty seamless, except if you change fibers, you can tell you changed fibers, but you'll learn how to do it so that um, the size of the yarn stays the same and um, all of that. And we just keep pulling a little bit. Now I'm going to let that be enough of this because I want to go on to something else, but I want to show you. Now I spent a lot of time drafting out stuff that was much, much longer than this and rolling it up in little things like this <laughs> um, to try and keep it, you know, putting it over to the side so that I would end up, um, so it wouldn't get in my way because if it, if your fiber catches on the, the part that you're spinning, then you've got some problems. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to take that and you just want to overlap them a little bit. And if you if that makes it too fat, you can draft out a little bit. And then you're going to spin. And right now I'm just showing you um, in my hand on the table here. I'll try to do a video where I'm actually dropping the spindle. But at the beginning, you're more important in it's more important to be figuring out how to draft it and um, than it is to to be able to do long distances of spinning at one time. It's not that important. In fact, some people spin like this all the time because they can't stand up and spin. They have to spin in, in a recliner or on their couch or whatever. And so, um, so there's, you can see there where it barber pulled, but um, that's where I put it together. Okay, so now I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to wind it on. And then I'm going to continue spinning. And it's important when you're spinning not to let the twist go past where you've drafted. Now, in this case, we've drafted everything, so it's not a big deal. But if you're holding a bunch in your hand that's not drafted and you're drafting as you go, and you let that twist move up into that stuff, you'll end up with a big wad. And that's not fun. Um, but for now, we're just, we're, we're spinning and then parking and then drafting and then spinning and parking and drafting, spinning and parking just means keeping this steady and drafting. And while this isn't technically drafting because you pre-drafted everything, you're learning the movements. And then let's go ahead and wind it on. And then we do it again, spin and let the twist move up into the fibers. So you've got your spun fiber and your unspun fiber right there next to each other. And these, these fingers right here are the only thing that's keeping this twist from going into this fiber. These need to be fairly firm unless you're drafting. If you're drafting, then you want to uh, loosen them up a little bit when you draft. Um, so it's like, it's a dance. Always give it a little more spin um, before you start winding it on. Just give it that little extra bit of umph. Now I've got, um, it'll do that to you sometimes if you let it, it make little piggy tails. Don't worry about that. It'll come back out. Uh, but I had this kind of wad up on me, so I needed to come and fix it. But then that, that means you've overspun it a little bit. So you, you can let this twist out like that. All right, now we're gonna wind this on and then bring it up here. 
and we're going to just wrap it around a few times so it'll keep the twist down here. We don't care if this unspins, but what's down here we want to stay put. Okay, so this is what our yarn looks like right now. Okay, now then um, let's do it with this black, I mean the brown, because it's, um, you also want to untwist it. And then we're going to, you, you've got a decision. When you get it fat like this, you've got a decision to make. You can just grab it in the middle and split it in half. Then you don't have as much to draft. Or you can start by drafting um, and just, you're not, then you, where you have to draft several times to get it down as thin as you want. And that's, I've done both, um, and my preferred method probably is to um, to split split one like this, like into half, and then draft. Unless you've got a pattern that you've dyed into it that you want to maintain, and then uh, that's a whole other story. Then you're splitting it to keep the pattern. Um, but right now, see, where this is still too fat to spin. I mean, you could you just make a really, really fat yarn. If you want a really fat yarn, you could do that. But we're just drafting it a little bit to get... Um, and like I said, you have to do it... Um, when you do it like this, you have to do it several times to get it to the place where you could just spin it like we did those others. It's not wanting to, there we go. I was holding it too tight. Okay, now I've already drafted that little piece into something about, you know, at least twice as long as it was. And then you go back to where you started and you drew it again and you make it smaller this time. And once you've done it, the second time, it's a lot easier. That's why drafting that alpaca was so easy, because I had already split it and, and done this to it several times to get it to that place. And we just keep going. And if you break it, which happens, let's just say I did, okay? Then you just overlap them quite a ways and go back down here and just start drafting again. And that just kind of puts it back together. Drafting, you know, practicing drafting is something that you can do, um, you know, when you can just sit and practice drafting while your husband's watching TV or something, if you're not terribly interested in what you're doing, I mean, in what's on the TV, because you do have to pay attention um, until it becomes muscle memory. And even then, when I'm drafting, I'm if I'm pre-drafting, I'm usually paying attention kind of to what's going on. Oops. This is very dry fiber right here. It's um, been really processed a lot. And so it flies a lot. It's very soft crimpy fiber, so it's, um, it'll be a pretty yarn, but it's a little bit 
harder to work with because it keeps wanting to fly away. Okay, now then we bring it back over here. And you can decide at this point if you want to spin it already or if you want to draft it out some more. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draft a little bit of it a little bit more until I get it to where I want to spin it. Um, if you want, like I said, if you want bulky, thicker yarn, then you leave it like that and go ahead and spin it. But I just want to make it a little bit thinner so it'll kind of match with this. And then um, just enough to spin some for you. And then we'll move on to the next one. Okay. Still got all this yummy fiber we can spin later. And we're just going to put this up with that. And then we're going to unspin that yellow a little bit so I can draft it a little bit thinner. Okay. And now we're going to spin. And we're keeping the twist so it doesn't go up here. And then we're going to move and let the twist in. Spin. And let the twist in. Okay. Now that's making a really pretty, really pretty fiber. That brown is nice. And then we're going to wind it on. And then we'll go around. And we spin, part, and pull. Uh, or release and let the let it move up the let the twist move up the fiber. Spin, park it, and let the twist move up into the fiber. And like I said, later the, you will be drafting at this point. Um, Now, I've got this a little bit too fat, so I'm just going to let go of it and let it unspin, and I'm going to draft it a little bit out. All right, now then we're going to spin. And then we're going to let the spin go up into those fibers. And I'm going to stop there because I want to leave some fluffy part to add on the next yarn. Always, before you start winding on your cop, go ahead and spin a little bit more to give it that extra. And when I park it, uh, you know, for a while, I go ahead and I make sure I twist it quite a few times on there. Some people just do a couple, but I do six or seven. <laughs> Okay, now then we've got this huge one, <coughs> and you can do it like we did the brown, where you just do it, um, see, I did, I did too much, and so that's come off, um, but you can even take a piece like this, and you can um, pre-draft it, so it's not wasted, you don't have to throw it away, you can go ahead and
and spin it. In fact, let's just do that. At first, I would suggest you have a couple of loops around here when you're um, stopping to, to put things together because if you just have one, it might slip off and unspin your stuff. Okay, now that I've got that and I've got the brown up here, so now we're just going to spin it and we're going to let it um, kind of incorporate itself in. Now I'm going to let that unspin a little bit because I didn't draft that quite thin enough there. And that's going to be fatter than my other yarn. And you'll have a lot of this and it's okay to just let it be fat. Um, but if you want to thin out, you know, you have a certain spot that's fatter than other places and you want to thin it out, you can do it. It just takes a little bit of effort. Ooh. Okay, now we're going to wind this one on. And we're almost to the end of this, but I do, I do want to, I think, draft a little bit more. Now then we're going to spin and then park it and later it will be drafting. Right now it's just letting the fat twist move up in the fibers. And then we're going to go ahead and put it down here and we're going to wind it on. Okay. Now then, I'm going to show you the splitting method. You could just take it in the middle and split it. Okay, now you can do this all the way down a one pound strip, which is very long. And then you have two equal halves. And um, one reason you might want to do that is if you've dyed this and you want to be sure you have the same stripe, like you dyed it in stripes, and you want to be sure you have the same stripes on each side. Um, if you're making a two-ply, you're going to have to do one spindle full and then wind that off in a ball and do another spindle spool and wind that off in a ball and then ply those two together. And um, so if you start with two pieces that are striped the same, your stripes will, um, when you ply, will be a lot closer to lining up. Now, you may not care about that. Um, Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. But you can split it in half like that. And then you can take each of those halves. And and now, once again, I wouldn't do that with a piece this long. But with a really long piece, then I would split it in half again. And then I would split it in half again. And then from here, I would draft. And you would draft this and keep you know all the ones that I all the ones that I broke apart all four of these I would keep together and roll them up into little um you know little um birds nests and then all the ones that I split off from this one I would keep in a separate little pile so that I could do it and you always need to ro roll them if you're doing that from the same end so that you can go one to the other um, and that's a little advanced for now but you need to understand that uh, let me show you something real quick okay here's some wool that I um, that I did that way okay this is um, I 
Uh, this is about one fourth. Yeah, about one fourth. Um, and you can see these stripes, if I want them to stay, you know, where it's in some sort of uniform order, then I have to kind of keep in mind where I'm starting from. And so I make, you know, these into little deals and I even put them in separate bags. And then I come in and you can tell the difference between this and this. This is just split. This is split and then pre-drafted a little bit. It just gets softer and it's a little easier to use than if you try to, to spin straight, straight from this. And you can spin straight from this, but when you dye the wool, sometimes it felts a little bit. Not enough to make it unusable, just enough to make it a little harder to spin. So the pre-drafting it a little bit, it doesn't even have to be a lot. This isn't a whole lot thinner than this, but that makes it easier when you come to spinning it. So that's a project I'm still working on on my wheel. But I wanted you to see um, why this splitting method is important sometimes. Okay, now the other thing I was going to show you was one of these. This is a what I call a puny roll egg, and I made it on a blending board. And you can blend all kinds of fibers together. There's some Angelina, see the sparkly stuff. There's a different kinds of wool. There's a little silk. There's a, a lot of different stuff blended into this, um, and it makes a really pretty yarn. But it doesn't draft the same way that this drafts. In fact, in some ways, this is easier because you just grab it um, and you just start drafting it. Now, this is not going to make as smooth a yarn as those other preparations do because it's um, it's got a little bit more of an art yarn um, personality. It's not made, I mean, you're not making it to be um, you're not making it to be a smooth yarn. You're making it to, to have interest and texture and whatever that dark stuff is. It's so long ago when I made this, that I can't remember <laughs> what that dark stuff is in there. It's not wanting to draft. So this is, this is going to end up spinning. This is more like a roving in that it, that everything's jumbled up in there. But you can see we're getting a, a long piece. It's all sparkly and pretty. And you just, and you do it kind of like the other. You don't draft a whole long time. You know, you just do it a little bit. Well, that broke, so that's fine. We'll just, um, this is how much we'll spin. But you can get quite a bit of yarn out of one of these. And I only included one of these in the kit, but, um, but I wanted you to see the difference in the preparation and, you know, just an idea of some other things that you can do. Okay. Now that we're going to do the same thing with this, we're going to overlap it. And then we're going to have to, um, to kind of draft these together. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So it'll be easier. Okay. Now we're going to spin. And then we're going to let the let it move up into it. And this is going to end up being I think a thicker yarn because I didn't draft it out a whole lot. And that's okay because for some things you want a thicker yarn. Okay, now I'm going to take this off and go ahead and wind it on. And 
and that's kind of what this looks like. I'm going to spin some more and then I'm going to um, ply it back on itself so you can see what it'll look like plied. Okay, now I'm going to put some of it back on here because that's too big a piece for me to, to ply back on itself in order to show you. And then I'm going to go ahead and wrap it a few times so I don't mess up what's in there before when I do this. And then you want to kind of park this. I usually park it like in your armpit or something. And then... Um, You kind of have to manipulate it a little bit when you do it this way because you're not giving it the same kind of um, attention ply-wise as you do when you're plying it for real. But this gives you an idea of what the yarn would look like. And if you like pink and stuff, this is a really pretty yarn. And then we want to undo it. And go ahead and wind it up. And that's what we're going to do for today. Um, I do want to show you one other thing real quick. That you can build while you're, while you're waiting for the class. Um, but you might watch this video and stop it and do a little and watch some more and do a little watch it several times and play play with it several times before we had the class but this is what the yarn that i've made so far <laughs> now this is a one ply but if we if we plied that with something like it you can see how it would look kind of like um like what i call the crazy quilt yarn so it would be a very interesting fun yarn okay now when you're i was talking about not wanting the fibers that you've got here to get into your, you know, to get spun up into this. Um, especially when you've got this long string and you're holding it like this, it could just come right over there and spin up into it. Let's, um, let's, let's use this as an example, okay? Well, let me just show you. You kind of have to try to keep this back here behind your hand. <coughs> Excuse me. So it doesn't catch on this. Because if it catches on that, it, it causes trouble. So you're spinning and then you're letting it go. And then you're drafting. And spinning and if this comes over here and catches it, it can really easily catch on that wool and get caught up in there and if that happens then it's a real headache to try and take it out now when you when you drop the spindle and you let it be suspended and twist in the air like this and then you're drafting you can't see me drafting but um that's that's when it tends to come over there and catch so when you get to that place you're going to have to have some way to keep your fibers under control and i'm going to show you something that a friend made for me i've never used it i haven't used it yet <laughs> um i need to but i need to so i'm going to learn how to use it and show y'all <clears throat> but it's called a wrist distaff and what you do is you put it on your wrist and then you tie a knot in it and then you take um, your fibers and she said that she goes ahead and um, puts her fibers in it the beads keep the um, make these 
parts that hang down, um, it weights it down so it'll stay down. But if like if we were going to do this one, <clears throat> you put it inside like this. And then, um, oops, we don't want to get that attached. Well, so this is inside of it, inside between these two groups of strands. And then she goes ahead and ties a knot down here too. So that all these beads don't wrap around each other and cause, um, cause trouble down there. And then you just wind your um, fiber around it so you can put a long length of fiber around this thing and sh you know it's made really for fiber that you're drafting so it wouldn't be this long probably um, Okay, I need to move it to the right hand. <laughs> and then you have it come up over your wrist, you know. And you spin like this. Let's... So you're holding your all your fiber here out of the way while you spin and then you draft and then spin and then you park it under your arm or between your knees either way and then you then you draft then you let the spin go up into the part you drafted, and you spin some more. And then you park it, and then you draft. And then you let the spin go up into the part you drafted, and you spin some more. And then you let that, take that and put it on your cop, oops, now I overspun that one little part and when that happens sometimes it breaks off. This is normal. Do not be disheartened when that happens because if you get discouraged when that happens you're going to give up on spinning because it happens a lot. It happens when you've done it a long time but it happens a ton at the beginning. And when it does, you just go back. You see how that little place was so skinny that it just got overspun. And you just take that offending part off <laughs> and you make it fluff again. And then you take your fluff and you add it in, put it right next to that. And then you start again. And then let it, let the twist travel up into the new wool. Now I can't, I can't do it like this. I'm going to have to change my camera setup to show you how to, um, how to do it with the, without, with the unsupported method. <laughs> and I'll do that in the next video. But this little thing here, and then when you get to a place where you, you know, you've spun all of the fiber you've got, then you just unwind it. Um, like this, unwind it from around there, take it back over your hand and spin some more. So this, this stuff just keeps your fibers from getting caught up in here. That's its whole purpose. Let me back up a little bit here and draft some.
Now this part, I did not draft um, again, so it's so it's fatter. I'm going to show you what that will look like when it's made into yarn. If we just go ahead and do it this way. Okay. Let me put some of it on on the spindle because that's too long to to show you. Okay. Uh, see, this would be a um, much bulkier yarn. It's pretty. It's just thicker. Let me see if I can see. And it's kind of thick and thin because I didn't um, wasn't drafting it while I was spinning it. Alrighty. Okay, now then, um, let me take this back off of here. I should have showed you this before I put the fiber on it, but anyway. I spun a lot of wool without one of these things. You don't have to have one. But if you're looking for something else to do to, um, to get prepared, um, this is something you can do. And it's, um, it's not that hard to make. I didn't make this one. A good friend made it for me. But you can see pretty easily how to do it just by looking at it. So I'm going to show it to you. Those beads really do like to tangle up on themselves. Okay. <laughs> well, didn't know I was going to have to be doing this. All right, so what you've got here is about 18 inches, and this is just single crochet, about 18 inches with a knot at this end and a knot at this end, and then about 12 inches um, of string and then some beads to give it some weight. But there are four strands of crochet cotton, um, like the Anita's, that weight, of crochet cotton and she just crocheted them together to about 18 inches long and then left about 12 inches on each end and um, and that's how, how you make it then you just tie beads on the bottom now these beads are um, plastic but they they're you know because of their size they weigh a little bit they weigh a little bit so it actually helps you could use wooden beads or glass beads whatever you want um, and, uh, you, you probably could use acrylic yarn too. She just had a bunch of cotton yarn and that's what she used. You could use wool, uh, wool yarn. You could use whatever you want. If you're going to be spinning wool, it might be better not to have this be made out of wool because wool likes to connect to itself. So the cotton or the acrylic would work better, um, to keep it from attaching itself to this. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Ollie. I, um, I'm going to, I'm going to practice and I'm going to get to where I can use this. I just haven't, Hannah's played with it some and she, um, she said she found, she thought it was helpful, but I just haven't done enough spinning from something that's long enough. Lately, I've been spinning from stuff that's just like a piece like this and I just hold it like this and spin. So this, you know, it's manageable. 
But when you're trying to spin from a long piece of something like that other that I showed you that I was using on the wheel, or um, then you, you need something like this to wrap it around. So if you're going to do a lot of pre-drafting, this would be helpful. The other thing you could do is have have it um, in a have your pre-drafted part over to the side, like in a bowl on the ground, and just have it coming up over your wrist and and spinning, you know, like this far away from where your bowl is. That would be helpful also. Um, anyway, the next video I'm going to do, you'll actually see me um, spinning and drafting at the same time, but the first practice that you need to do before you get to the part where you're trying to spin and draft at the same time is to park and draft, which means you, you spin a little bit and then you draft it and then you spin and then you draft. And, um, and remember, don't let, don't let the spin get up past these fingers because if the twist gets past these fingers, then whatever you've got over here becomes a big wadded mess and you don't want that to happen. Okay, if you have any questions, um, you can ask. If you have a specific thing that you would like me to make another video more specifically about, um, you know, maybe I didn't explain it good enough, um, I can do that. Also, we're going to have a hangout in a couple of weeks. And when we do that, um, you know, y'all can ask questions while we're working on it. That's the beauty of that. So, all right, enjoy.